There's a point. 7,000 RPM. Where everything fades. The machine becomes weightless. Just disappears. And all that's left is a body moving through space and time. 7,000 RPM. That's where you meet it. You feel it coming. It creeps up on you close in your ear. Ask you a question. The only question that matters. Who are you? Hi, I'm Colleen Sheehan and welcome to Next Generation Classics. And I'm here to show that classic cars are just as cool as modern supercars. And I'll show you why with this 412P Tribute. Nowadays, when you think of like the big three supercars, you could think of stuff like the LaFerrari and the 918 and the P1. But all of those are street cars. Back in the day, the big supercars were all race cars. So the P4s and the 917 and the GT40. And they have so much more historical significance. They have these histories and personalities to them that a lot of modern cars lack. So back in the 60s, in 1961, Ferrari came out with the 206 SP and that was the first mid-engine V6 race car of theirs and it was very successful and then they came out with the 250 LM later on and that was the first mid-engine car to win at Le Mans so it was a milestone for Ferrari I mean the 60s were a time of almost complete dominance for Ferrari but then they had a bit of an embarrassment in 1966 when they lost to Ford in the GT40 versus the P3 so in 1967 they had to come back with a vengeance and they did with the P4 and they won one two three first second third at Daytona at Ford's home track so in the same year in 1967 they also came out with this car the 412p and that was a privateer race car so they had their factory team cars and then they had cars like this which were their privateer race cars Ferrari really did not want the privateer racers to be able to beat their factory cars. So while the P4 and the 412P look very similar, there are some major differences. The biggest one being that the P4 was fuel injected and the 412P was carbureted. So it did have a bit of a power difference. And back in this time, one of the best and biggest privateer racers, especially heavily involved with Ferrari, was David Piper. He drove these cars for years. Most of the different prototype cars. He drove the 412P. He drove so many different cars. He was in Formula One and he was a very successful privateer racer. And David Piper actually helped with the build of this car, which is part of what makes it such an accurate, possibly the most accurate 412P tribute in existence. I know I called this a 412P tribute, so I figured I should explain the difference between a tribute and a replica and a resto mod. For a resto mod, it's say like what Singer does with their cars. You will take an original classic Porsche and gut it and modernize it. So it's a completely new car with that classic feel to it. But a replica is an exact copy of a real car. So with the 250 GTOs or the California Spiders, you would take the chassis and engine from a donor car like a 250 uh, GTE and use that to build your replica. So it'll have the correct engine and chassis, gauges, seats, all the parts will be real Ferrari parts and it's 
a real replica of the car exactly how a real one is. For a tribute car like this one, there's no donor cars available. There were only four 412Ps ever made. So you're not gonna find a donor chassis or engine lying around somewhere. It just does not exist. But this car is the most accurate replica because the body panels were built off of original body panels. So everything is very correct in how it looks, but it has some modern upgrades like a 550 engine in it, which is definitely not a downfall because this 550 engine actually produces a little more horsepower than the original 412p engine. This car took over 10 years to build and the owner was actually able to enlist the help of David Piper to build this car. So certain pieces of the car, like these headlight covers, came from David Piper. And these are headlight covers that David Piper had made in order to have spares for his car, his real 412. And then this windshield is a original 412P windshield. So there were only three spare windshields and two of them were cracked and broken. So this windshield windshield is the only spare real 412p windshield in existence besides the four that are still on the real cars. The body of this car was built off of the fiberglass body panels on Piper's car. And David, when he raced, he knew accidents happened. So he had all these spare parts made and he made the fiberglass body panels for his car. That way, when he was racing, if there was an accident, he could switch out a body panel and do some work to get the car back on the track. So the combination of the original fiberglass body panels and the headlight covers and the real windshield helped in order to create this car and the correct dimensions and lines that you just couldn't get otherwise. I mean, if you don't have those parts, you're kind of guessing with the body lines, which is what makes this so accurate. Another really cool original part on this car is the interior cloth. It's a flame retardant cloth that came from the Ferrari factory in 1969. David Piper was well respected by Enzo Ferrari. Enzo saw him as a racer and a car builder, just like how Enzo started out. So he was willing to help him out a lot and he gave him a lot of spare bits. So this cloth came from Ferrari and it's what was originally in the 412P. And it's pretty cool because like I said, it's flame retardant and it snaps off. So in case of a fire, you would grab it and it unsnaps and you can roll up and roll out of the car in it and have some form of fireproofing around you to get away from the flames because the 60s were a very dangerous time in racing and as Jackie Stewart said it was a time where sex was safe and racing was dangerous and David Piper saw a lot of his friends die back in the day racing so when he helped to build this car he was very insistent on making sure it was up to more of today's safety standards another really cool thing in this car is the transmission so like I said before you're not gonna find a spare 412p transmission and engine just lying around. So this transmission is actually from a Porsche G5050 and it was made it inverted to the engine, which is a pretty cool feat in itself that they were able to make that happen in the build and it works seamlessly. Even the little details on this car are from a real Ferrari. So like all the switches in the middle are from a 1967 Ferrari. And then the owner of this car got some help from Glickenhaus who owned a real 412P. The original 412P were all fixed roof cars, but the owner of this car, when he was building it, wanted to give the option for a Targa top because it is a quite cramped little cockpit. So he wanted to give that extra headroom for anyone tall. So I already unlatched the little latches in the back and then you just pop the roof off. And it's super simple and I like the versatility because it gives you the option to drive top off or if you're a little bit taller and it's super easy to put on and off. As I mentioned, the engine in this car is from a 550 Marinello, and the donor car was hit in the rear, which is pretty important when you're mentioning a donor engine from a front engine car, because if it was hit in the front, that could have caused damage to the engine. Plus, the original car only had 9,000 miles, so it is the perfect donor engine for this car. And it was dynoed at 600 horsepower, but only at 7,200 RPM.
and the red line on this car is 9,000 RPM. So this car is upwards of 600 horsepower and it's super lightweight and it makes it an absolute rocket ship. Now one of the cool original things on this car is the wheels. So the owner of this car was able to source an original 412 wheel and those wheels are made of magnesium. So they get brittle over time and they're not safe to drive on. The owner took the original wheel and 3D copied it and made these four wheels, but made it to today's safety standards. Hearing all the stories of the owner talking about his communications with David Piper about this car were so much fun. The history behind it is incredible. And so one of my favorite stories is how the owner got this mesh or this gauze. It is original 1967 412P gauze that they used on these cars. And David Piper was given a role by Enzo Ferrari. As I mentioned, Enzo really liked David, so he gave him the original role. And when the owner was trying to get the original parts, David had agreed to give him the piece in order to make this. But in the phone call, the owner could hear David's wife in the background saying, last time you tried to cut a piece out of that gauze, you cut the dickens out of your hand, so just give him the whole roll. And so the owner ended up getting the whole roll of gauze for the back of the car. And it's stories like that that really connect the history of this car. David Piper was able to actually come and see the this car completed at Rensport this year. He signed the back and he signed inside the door on the passenger side. And it's those stories that make these cars have those personalities that you don't really get with the modern cars. The 412P has such a rich history and it's such a milestone for Ferrari. And this 412P tribute has its own story to tell that is so unique and interesting. So I hope that you guys agree that classic cars can be just as cool as modern supercars. And this 412 really is a great example of that. Please help to preserve the passion for these classic cars. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. So stay tuned because we got a lot more content coming very soon.